This video will discuss the gradient of energy functions in computational chemistry. So in general, in computational chemistry, we usually have some type of potential energy function, whether that's from molecular mechanics, quantum mechanics, somewhere else. So we have this V of X, if I have some kind of structural variable there, X. So V of X might be some potential energy function in one dimension. And in something like the harmonic oscillator, I might define this to be something like 1 half kx squared. So that would be this type of uh, function here, v of x, as a parabola, where the stiffness of this parabola would be determined by this k. And the variable x is how far we are away are from the, the middle or the equilibrium uh, energy. So if I wanted to compute the force that is acting on our particle at any given location due to the presence of this potential energy, well, force is just the negative derivative of that potential energy with respect to the variable or whatever direction you're talking about. So in this case, f of x, the force acting on our particle in the x direction, is the negative first derivative of potential energy in the x direction with respect to x. So if our potential energy is a parabola, 1 half kx squared, then our force is a linear force, negative kx. So this is what we would call a restoring force. The further we get away from the origin, the steeper the slope gets, so the bigger the force gets, which is pushing us back towards the middle. So that's why a harmonic oscillator has that type of oscillating behavior, because there's always a force that's pushing it back towards the middle. All right, so in three dimensions, or even more, but specifically in three dimensions, we go from having potential energy V of X to having V of X, Y, Z, coordinate in each of the three dimensions for a single particle. So in going from one dimension to multiple dimensions, we go from having just this negative first derivative to having what's called a gradient. So we go to negative, and then in each dimension, we have partial derivative of the potential with respect to that variable times a unit vector in that direction. So what this equates to, or well, this is the force, not the gradient, but what this equates to is a direction. And this is a direction in which the potential energy is going to be decreasing the fastest. So if we don't have this negative sign here, then we have what's called the gradient, which would be del V X, Y, Z. This upside triangle is the uh, kind of Greek character del. So I have del V is this vector. And del V, the gradient, is pointing us in the direction in three-dimensional three, in three space in which the energy is increasing the fastest. So taking that negative sign gives us the force or the direction that we're trying to go to decrease our potential energy in the quickest way. If we have some n atom system, we have n atoms in our system, each of those atoms has three coordinates, so we would have three n coordinates. So we might represent our potential energy, for example, in molecular mechanics, as we've been discussing in terms of the x, y, z coordinates. So we might have v is a function of x1, y1, z1, the three coordinates of particle 1, x2, y2, z2, three coordinates of particle 2, etc., all the way to the three coordinates of particle n, our last particle and or atom. So I might, <clears throat> this gets quite cumbersome to deal with after a while. After more than about two atoms, I get tired of writing out all these indices. So I can collapse these a little bit by indicating this r vector for each of them. So this r would just be um, the ordered pair of all of these, uh, or the ordered triplet of the three coordinates of it. x, i, y, i, z, i would be the r vector for atom i. So we could say the potential is a function of r1, r2, all the way up to rn. Or additionally, you might see this collapsed even further down as to a function of r to the 3n, which is a function of all n of these r vectors or all 3n of these coordinates. All three of these expressions would be equivalent to one another. Okay, so we have V of R to 3N, that is our energy. Our energy is a function of the XYZ coordinates of all of our atoms, typically. And then the negative gradient of that potential is the force that is acting on all of our atoms. 
So extending this to um, the partial derivative for every uh, particle in every dimension, then we would get basically a set of arrows which are corresponding to the directions that each of these particles are being forced to move in order to decrease their potential energy res in response to that energy gradient which is generating the force which is acting upon them.